G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we've got a very quick uh, beginner tutorial in Grasshopper, um, covering a fairly common technique um, using attractor points and arrays. Now in this case, um, yep, it's a pretty cliche tutorial. I find the cliche ones work the best for beginners. Um, again, this is following on from another very cliche tutorial, uh, but these are tricks I usually use to introduce people to computation. Uh, the reason why I've made my own attractive tutorial is there's a few nuances in what I do versus other tutorials to teach here. Um, and also I know that my viewers specifically, um, not all of them are that well versed in computation. So I just wanted to get people's feet wet a little bit before we go into some more complex topics in a few weeks time. Um, today we'll look at making a 2D array and using what's called a multi-dimensional or MD slider and how you can re-parameterize surfaces, um, which is a really common technique and a common thing people miss. And finally, how we can apply the result algorithmically using uh, what we would call attractor points. Unlike a typical attractor tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can source more than one attractor point as well. Um, so we'll be using Rhino 7 and Grasshopper today. Um, and if you find that I'm talking too fast, some people do, uh, feel free to use the playback speed option in YouTube uh, to slow me right down. But in this case, I'm just going to jump straight into Rhino and Grasshopper. So I'm going to begin just by creating a rectangular cell of a given size. So in this case, to do this, I'm going to be using uh, probably a rectangle node. And I'm just going to change my display to icons. I find them a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to be constructing, uh, first of all, a domain. Um, so in this case, uh, what I'm going to do with this domain, by default, we can see it's negative one to one and uh, negative two to two for X and Y. Um, what I'm actually going to do is instead, um, I'm gonna construct a, a domain from zero to a number. So we're always building this tile in the positive or the X and the Y direction respectively from the origin point. So I'm just gonna create a slider and a shortcut to doing this is to do the minimum value, uh, the median value or the middle value you want it to be set to and then the upper value. So I'll do one, five and 10. And we're just setting the upper portion of our domain. So we now have, in this case, uh, zero, which should be zero to five. I plug that into X and Y, and I've now got a single tile cell that I can control from the start of my script. So I'll just make it 10 by 10 for now. And what we're gonna wanna do with this is we're gonna wanna create an array. So I'm gonna look for an array, and we've got 3D linear, polar, and box arrays. Um, I'm gonna use a rectangular array in this case, which you can find under transform. Um, if you do ever wanna look for a node, you don't know where it came from, you hold down control, alt, and click, and it will literally highlight. That's not me actually adding this in after, um, after effects or anything like that. That's actually what it looks like. And I can see the tab, and I can also see the component, and finally where it is in the actual ribbon. And I can do that with any old component. It's very easy and very useful. Um, but what I'm going to do now is it, it's, I'm going to take a piece of geometry and a cell and luckily my geometry is a cell. So all I have to do is just feed the rectangle into both and you can see we end up with an array of cells. So I can now go and hide my initial rectangle and it's plain. And now I'll get another slider between 5 to 15 to 20, maybe 25. And I can use this to control the number of cells I have in both directions. So I now have an array of, of um, cells in this case. So with this, I'm gonna to wanna to first of all get the center point of each of these cells and I can use the area node to do that, which in this case will give me both the area and the centroid of these closed curves. And I'm also gonna to wanna to create a bounding box around all the cells together so I can assess this as a surface. So in this case, I'm gonna look for BB or bounding box and I'm gonna get this bounding box node now some nodes in Grasshopper have alternative modes and usually they'll indicate this with this small uh, small window down here. Now currently if I use it in its default mode, it's gonna put a bounding box around every individual cell, which I don't actually want. Um, in this case, I actually wanna right click and do what's called a union box, which will go around every piece of geometry that's fed to this node as a single one. And I'm gonna turn this into a surface instead of a flat box. So I can evaluate it because effectively a, a surface is a flat box in principle or vice versa. Um, now what I want to do with this is I'm going to actually get two points within what we call the domain of this flat surface and see how far away the other points are from this 
and use this to map this to a piece of geometry that gets extruded from the cell. So depending how far or how close you are to these attraction points, this will influence the heights of the objects in this piece. And you can create things like waveforms and all sorts of interesting shapes out of it. So I'm gonna be evaluating the surface. And I'm first of all going to want to provide the surface, but then I also need to provide a UV parameter, which you can provide in the form of an X and a Y coordinate of a point. In this case, I'm going to use what's called an MD or multi-dimensional slider, which actually returns these two points and lets me move around a, a 2D slider. Now, what I'm going to want to do is actually evaluate the surface in its domain. So if I connect it currently, it's not actually working within the domain of the overall surface. I actually want to right click on surface and reparameterize this to match the domain of zero to one. And now this point will work across the entire domain of the surface. And you can see that point moving in Grasshopper in tandem with my own movements. Now let's just make two of these. So I'm just going to make two points of attraction. And in this case, I'm going to say to influence them based on the closest attractor point. So I'm gonna make one and I'm gonna make two in this case. And what we're gonna do with this is see how far away the center of each cell is from both of these attractor points. So I'm gonna use the distance node in this case and say from this centroid, how far away is this point? It's important to note that when I'm evaluating surfaces, I'm getting all sorts of other properties about that surface too, such as the normal at that point, and also other properties such as U and V direction, as well as the frame, which is usually more relevant to curves in most cases. So I'm gonna do the same. And what I wanna do with this is find out which of these two items is larger. For this, I can use the max node, which will take two items and return the greatest of the two. So now we're just comparing and from these lists, we'll end up with whichever one was larger in this case. Now I can also do min as well, and I might actually do min instead. I think min's probably a little bit better, which one's closer. And now we can use multiple points of attraction as a result. Now at the moment I have a whole bunch of distances with no range set. So what I'm gonna do first of all, is I'm gonna check the, the bounds or the extents of this to get the minimum and the maximum value. So I can see I'm dealing with values from about three to 95 at the moment. And we're going to remap these numbers to a more even domain, just to keep things simple. So at the moment, I'm gonna remap the numbers. And in this case, I'm taking those minimum values. My source domain is going to be the bounds and my target domain is going to be different. So this is where I can influence the height of how far we're gonna extrude based on these values. So my target domain, instead of being zero to one, um, we're gonna to wanna to make it just a little bit more than zero by default because otherwise an extrusion will fail. So I'm gonna go in this case from 0.01 and I'm gonna go up to uh, almost one in this case, 0.99. And in this case, I'm also going to make a number and let's say this is how far we wanna extrude. So let's say that this is our maximum extrusion height. Let's say 10 is our minimum, 20 is our middle, uh, or maybe 30 is our middle and 50 is our maximum. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do with this value in this case, and I might just put this over near my sliders for better control. First of all, I wanna find out um, what 0.99 is of that as the division. So I'm going to divide in this case, that number by 0.99. And that will be, oh, whoops, uh, 0.99. And that effectively is going to be the number that is my maximum when it's at 0.99 in its remapped extent. So we should find that if I do this, the extent of the remap value should still top out at the most in this case at uh, when we multiply this, it should top out at that number still. So I'll take my remapped values, multiply them by this number here. And I believe in this case, if we check the bounds, our largest number should in this case be 30. And we can see that that's true and correct. I can now take this and use it as a factor of a Z vector. And we can use this to extrude each cell by its distance measured in this algorithm. So in this case, I'm just gonna take my original cells and I'm gonna do a linear extrusion. So I'm gonna extrude along a vector. 
In this case, I'll take uh, those cells and I'll extrude them along that vector and I'll also cap them as well. And we can see now very quickly, we've got a great little algorithm that's able to influence these objects. And as I move around, in this case, my attractor, you'll notice that I'm starting to influence those areas where it gets higher or lower. In this case, we can see that where you're closer to the point, obviously you're going to be lower. And I have two points that are able to interact with this particular surface. So it's a really great and visual way to understand this type of algorithm. I can obviously make this higher for the maximum. And we can see that those remapped values are now gonna be higher on average, but they still go down to an extreme low, of course. If you ever wanna see something more clearly, you can use what's called a custom preview in Grasshopper instead. And we can instead put a solid material on there using a swatch. And you can pick a, a color to suit and that might be a little bit easier to see. But now I can really clearly see the impact that I'm having on this particular thing. Now, what if we want to invert the relationship between the high and the low? Maybe the, the closer we are to the attractor, the higher we want to be. Well, all I have to do in that case is just minus this value from one, which is why I made these uh, both not equal to one or zero, so that they never actually equal zero. So in this case, I'm just gonna take that value from one to invert it. So in this case, instead, I can see I can literally flip that relationship. And if you wanna do a control to literally toggle this relationship, instead we can use what's called a stream filter to switch the relationship. So the way a stream filter works is if you get a Boolean toggle, effectively, whilst this is false, we will send through gate zero. When it's true, we'll send through gate one. So let's say by default that we wanna send through the remap values when it's true, and otherwise we'll send through those values minus one, and we'll send through the outcome. So I can actually just toggle this relationship now on the fly. So if I wanna right click this wire and make it hidden, I can bring all my controls together in one place and I can begin influencing my surface until I have something that I'm happy with. And then I can invert it if I want to, all using a very simple algorithm and some really powerful controls. Um, MD sliders are really useful. They're, they're typically used for reparametrizing on surfaces to pick particular points you want to, but they do have a lot of really handy uh, uses as well. You can use them in image sampling as well, which we might cover in a future tutorial, but overall just a simple, um, fairly direct little algorithm uh, that can go on to do a lot of really interesting things. Um, attraction can do a lot of really interesting uh, geometric uh, outcomes in various scenarios. We can also obviously use attraction to push downward if we want to do a ceiling instead. Um, that's obviously not too difficult. In this case, we could just multiply this by negative one. Or we could just reverse the vector, actually. I might just reverse the vector. So we can just do that. And now we're dealing with a ceiling instead. So it's very easy, as long as you understand the relationship between these numbers and the geometry, you can very quickly create different types of outcomes quite quickly and on the fly. So I hope that's been a useful tutorial in learning a little bit more about fundamentals of Grasshopper and a few more nodes. Um, you'll be able to find this script and others on my GitHub, um, as well as a lot of other information I create over at Aussie BIM Guru. Um, as well as this, obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below or send me an email. Um, any requests, no problems. Um, and I'll reply to all the comments as well. Um, but thank you for watching today. And I look forward to sharing more videos in future. Do let me know if you're finding these beginner focused videos useful for Grasshopper. Eventually, I will move on to more advanced topics. Uh, but I hope this has helped bring everyone up to uh, roughly a similar level uh, before we dive into more complex workflows, especially those using geometry. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care.